done. And um, I will be keeping an eye on chat as we go through, but you're also welcome to unpause yourself and ask questions if you have them. Um, I'm working from just my laptop today, so I'm trying to monitor uh, everything, <laughs> chat and um, our, the screens and, and your questions. So if I, if I miss something, just feel free to give me a shout out and I'll, I'll pause. So today we are talking about announcements and the calendar in Canvas. So if you are going to follow along with me, go ahead and open up, um, you know, pull your game over, minimize it, and open up your sandbox. If you're just kind of taking notes, then that's fine too. Either way, whichever works best for you. Don't forget, I will send a recording out, um, an email out after. Oh, let me move my hand. How's that, Ebony? Is that better? Much, much better, thank you. Thank I have a tendency to put my hand on my computer and I think I do it right where my microphone is. It's a bad habit. Okay, so um, I will be, this is being recorded and I will send the recording out after. So if there is anything that you wanted to review, you will be able to do that. So. Go ahead, like I said, open up a sandbox if you have it, or if you're taking notes, or if you're just following along and listening, whatever is up to you. All right, let's start with announcements. So I'm in my course, my sandbox, and, and I actually don't have any current announcements or anything like that right now. Um, just I'm on my home page. Um, so that's that's it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on announcements. This I with a slash, there's two things that this means. It can either mean that I have it hidden from students. So all of these things down here, I have hidden so my students cannot see these pages. Or it can mean I don't have anything published yet. So like if my modules was graded, this, this I, that would just mean I didn't have any published modules. So since it's next to announcements, it's because I don't actually have any announcements in this course yet. So to make an announcement, I click on the word announcements and it's going to pull up this page and you can see that I don't have any announcements yet. So I'm going to hit the plus announcement button and it's going to look just like it does if I'm creating a page or an assignment or discussion. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a title. And then I'm going to put my message in. Very straightforward. Okay. Now, in this case, that's just text. And that's totally fine. Like, maybe that's all you have. Maybe you want to say, um, this week we are, and then put in your agenda for the week. for example, okay? And so I could put in like my learning targets here. I could put links to activities if I had those made, or I could just give them a general overview. I, I know when I taught, I had a board at the back of my room and I like to put my week at a glance up so the kids had a rough idea of where we were headed. At the front of the room on my main board, I put my step-by-step -step agenda for like the class period but I did a, a general overview board at the back. So that's one way you could use an announcement would be that same general overview. So, and then Tuesday, it's gonna be et cetera, et cetera, okay? And then maybe on Friday, we're gonna have a quiz over, okay? So now my kids would have a basically a rough little week at a glance, or I could put my learning targets here. My um, I, I will buy statements or I can buy statements could go here for the week. Um, you know, just different options. If I'm ready to share this, um, by the way, I can also adjust the size of my font. I can also adjust, you know, italicize it. I can change the color, including custom if you happen to know the hex codes. And you can do some manipulation here if you wanted to. Okay, so you can adjust that a little bit, but this is a text only announcement. All right, um, for it, I'm ready to post it. 
If I want to post it now, then I don't need to do anything else. I would just say save. As soon as I hit save, it's going live. Okay, so as soon as I hit save, that announcement is now live in my class. And anybody enrolled in my class gets an email telling them that I've just made a new course announcement. Okay. All right. Let me stop there. That is a text only live announcement. Any questions for this? Uh, yes, Misty. You left the click on the allow students to reply. Where the replies will come? To where? The replies would be right here. It almost would be like a discussion. And okay. on the announcement page itself, if anybody had replied, um, you would see right here, it would say like one out of one hasn't been read or zero out of one has been read if I had any that haven't been read yet. You can turn that on or off. It is not required. I think that's, it just defaults to whatever the last thing you did was. So if I don't, if y'all, if I don't need comments on there, I can turn that off. But I don't think it's a bad idea to have comments because that way if they have questions about whatever you posted in the announcement, they could ask them there. So that's up to you. Does that help? Very good. Um, any other questions about how, about announcements up to this point? Okay, let's go ahead and make another one. So again, I hit the plus announcement button. Same thing, it's gonna be a blank, just word editor, basically. And in this case, I'm gonna put in reminder, um, I don't know, picture day, September 13th. Woo, how about that spelling of September? Let's try that again. And what I want you to know is that you can put in video announcements. Okay, so if I wanted to, I would go right here to this little media icon, okay? And I can hit the, this little down and, and I could do an upload or record media. I can also put in an image or a file. So let's say that I have a flyer about picture day. If I wanted to, I could come here to this file and say upload a document and I could find that PDF flyer on my computer. So like, let's say this PDF right here is the one, and then I can submit it. Now it's gonna just put it in as a link, but what I can do is click on it and then go to options, and I can say, auto open the inline preview. This is no different than your pages, guys. I'm just showing you some options here within your announcements. Okay, so we'll pretend like that's a flyer about picture day. And again, I can then hit save, and that automatically go, goes live out to my students. And then there's the flyer about picture day where they can see the information. Well, we're pretending. I know it's really about the glossary tool, but we're pretending it's about picture day. <laughs> okay, so I can do that same thing with images and video as well. Any questions about adding files or images to an announcement? Okay. The last one I'm gonna show you for announcement is I'm gonna show you how to add video, which was what I was just talking about, where you actually record. And then I'm also gonna show you how to delay posting. So follow the same steps, hit the plus announcement button. Um, I don't know, I need a title. I'm running out of clever things to put in here, guys. So I'm gonna put in my text information, but then I'm also going to put in the same information, but I want them to hear my voice, okay? So I hit this button right here. I said upload or record media, and then I'm gonna click record. I'm gonna allow. So there I am, if you can see me on my screen, that is the built-in tool within Canvas. I can hit start recording and that will let me do a video recording. I can also turn my webcam off and do an audio only recording. So if I had specific instructions that I wanted my students to see, and I think that this is really important, especially if we know 
current situation um, being that with mask requirements and things like that, we know how important it is for our students to be able to see our faces. Those micro expressions go a long way in, in students understanding what we're trying to say. So a video announcement can go a long way, especially for your students that you may not be able to see face to face. So just an idea, and even for your in-person, your students who are gonna be in class, video announcements are still a good idea because you could record them at home without your mask and they would be able to see your face and they'd be able to listen to the announcement with their headphones and things like that. So again, you just hit start recording. And now it's recording my video announcement. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm so happy to see you. I hope you had a great break. I know it's been a long time. I uh, hope you're ready to dive back into learning. Lots of exciting things planned for this year. Okay, hit finish. If you could preview it, if you're happy with it, hit save and it'll pop it into your announcement. Okay. You can also, like I said, import videos from YouTube or Khan Academy or anything like that. This one I just wanted to show you because I wanted you to see that you can record live from within Canvas. This is true of announcements, of pages, of assignments, and of discussions. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I am going to delay posting and I don't want this to post until August 25th or August 31st, whatever. I have that choice. So like if you're having a really great hair day and you wanna knock out five or six announcements that you know or things, you could go ahead and schedule them and have a month, a weekly Monday announcement scheduled to come out for the first four or five weeks of the school year if you know what you're going to say in those announcements. Just for example, you can schedule them as far out as you want, okay? Um, and then if you decide to cross list your classes, you will have the ability to send announcements to all sections or only to specific sections. So my high school teachers, I know in the past you guys had that A day and B day class, that fifth period class. And I know sometimes they weren't always in the same place. So if you wanted to, you could send an announcement out like just to your B day fifth period class. Um, or you could send it to everybody except that fifth period class. Does that make sense? Um, I don't have any extra sections in here, but you could, they would show up here if you cross list your classes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to come back to announcements. Here are all three of my announcements, but when I go home, only the first two will be visible because the third one has not gone live yet. And to show you how I get these here, go to settings, course details, scroll all the way down to the bottom, hit more options, and check the box that says show recent announcements. Default is three. You could do three or four. I wouldn't do more than that. Otherwise, it'll start to get long. But that way, it'll show the three most recent uh, announcements that you've sent out to your students. So even if they don't check their email, when they hit the home page in their course, those announcements will be pinned to the top. All right, pause here before we switch over to calendars. Questions about announcements or how to pin them to your home page? Uh, Misty, after the due date for the announcement, they will be deleted or they will no longer show up in my homepage? They stay, but after you get a, like a fourth one there, it'll bump that this one off. So it's only going to show the most recent ones, but if the kids go to announcements, they would all be there. Except the one that hasn't gone live yet. So they can always come back and see the announcements unless you go in and delete them. So Misty, on the kids end, do they only see three? Because if each one of their teachers is sending one out on Monday, that's going to hide four of them, right? This would be at their course level, Lisa. So they would only see yours in your course. 
Oh, okay, okay. And then in their other course, they would see the ones from that other teacher. Gotcha. Yes. Now, they might get multiple emails, depending on when teachers send announcements out, but I think that's also why it's a good idea to do the, the pinned ones. That way, if they get tired of checking their email, if they feel overwhelmed by the email, they can just come here and see them on the home page. So this is what it would look like for students. You can see they can only see these two. They cannot see that third one because I have not, I have not published it or it's not live yet. Does that help clarify that? Okay. All right, any other questions about announcements? Okay, awesome. Let's look at calendars now. So I'm gonna come out to my dashboard. And over here on this gray sidebar menu, I have the word calendar. And if you've got yours popped in, then it's just gonna be the icons. So it'd be the calendar icon. If you have it popped out, you'll see the words. So I'm gonna click on calendar. And this is going to show me all of my courses. So here are all of the courses that I'm enrolled in over here. You'll notice that only certain ones I have showing. And that's because I have so many courses, you can only show 10 at a time, which is fine because our students won't be enrolled in more than 10 courses. So for them, that, that works, okay? Um, you will notice too that they are color coded. So these, that way on your calendar, they will be different colors for the students. Um, let's see, okay. So like here, just to show you, th this is from the G Suite course, and then this was from my testing course. You can see they're two different colors, okay? So that will be the same way for your kids. Those, those courses will all be different colors. So Lisa, your class, I mean, they, they'll, they can control this, but your class might be purple, but their math class might be blue, their English class might be green, but that way they can easily differentiate between their classes. They can also adjust their view and you can as well. So default is the month view, but you can make it to a week view, a month view, or an agenda view. An agenda view is going to show like the tasks listed out by due date. So Misty, the colors will, will be by default different colors? They will be by default, yes. yes. But they, you can also adjust them. If you're like, I don't want that to be pink, I want it to be orange, you can change it but it will by yeah. default be automatically different colors as well. We just need to watch there is a different color than math or science, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. And your kids can adjust that themselves. So if like you picked blue, but they're, they already had a blue class, Canvas will automatically adjust the color for them. So they wouldn't have two of the same unless they chose to. Does that make sense? So like if I wanted all my DL courses to be the same color, I could make them that because I want them to all be pink or whatever. I can change, I could do that. But again, they can only show 10 at a time. Okay, so you can build from this global calendar, but I don't recommend it. What I recommend is that if you wanna add something to the calendar, I recommend that you actually go to that course. So I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna go into my sandbox. John, sorry, I just saw your question. Yes, the students control their color, yep. That's one of the nice things about, about Canvas is that um, it, a lot of the things are customizable at the end user level. So if kids prefer agenda view, but you prefer month view, you don't override their settings by setting your calendar to month view. They control their own calendar view. So I think that's actually a nice, a nice way because everyone can kind of customize it to work for themselves. So over here in my course, you can see that I have an option to view calendar right here. This is only going to show the calendar for this particular course. 
this is nice if I want to add specific items for just this course, okay? So like if I wanted to add a, if I wanted to add um, a, an event right here on the 14th, just double click on the 14th, give this a title, reminder AP test today, and I'm gonna just leave all this alone, but you can see that it's already defaulting to my, my current course. And then I'm gonna say submit, and it's gonna add that to the calendar. This is another reason to cross list your classes when the, I'm sorry, I covered up my microphone again. This is another reason to cross list your classes when the time comes, because that way you can post just to that master class and all of your classes will get that same event calendar. Otherwise you would have to post it to each class's calendar separately. So just kind of keep that in mind, okay? If you make an assignment in Canvas and put a due date, it will automatically add to the calendar. You do not have to come back in and add it after the fact. The only thing you would have to add, physically add to a calendar would be if you wanted to add events from at the calendar level. So an events would be more like reminders. You can export your Canvas course to your Google Calendar. Like you can add your Canvas course, your Canvas calendar to your Google calendar. You cannot do the other way. It's one way right now. You cannot put your Google calendar in Canvas. Just throwing that out there. I had somebody ask about it today. So that's why I wanted to let you know. So if you take this link right here, you can actually add that to your Google calendar if you wanted to. All right, questions about the calendar. As long as you put due dates in, Dawn, they show up for kids. So even if you put a due date that's like four or five months from now, it would add to that calendar in four or five, like it would be there already. Um, like if you go look, my courses, I have things that are not due until June of 2021 or May of 2021. Oh, I'm not in my global calendar anymore. Yes, it shows the name of the assignment and details. Lisa, I do not know of a way to use pictures. I have never tried that. I just figured it'd make arts stand out more if I put a picture of a line to remind them that their line project was due or whatever, so. Yes, I do not know of a way to do that. Okay. Um, Dawn, you can see right here, these two assignments were made in my Canvas course. Example, Google Cloud assignment. It's got the due date right here. If the kids click on it, they can actually go directly to the assignment as well, straight from the calendar. So that was from the calendar view. So that's what it would look like right there. And you can see the difference. This was an event. Um, and then this was an assignment. It has that assignment icon. If you change the due date, it will update on the calendar, yes. So like if I went in here and I changed this due date and I can actually edit it even from here. So if I want to make it due on the 13th, it moves it. If I actually open it up and make an adjustment, I'm gonna move it to the 10th and then say save. Whoops, so if I go back to my calendar now. Sorry, I clicked too many buttons all at once, guys. It moved it to the 10th. 
Hey, Misty, you've probably said this, but are you putting together a training thing for the kids? I have a course that I'm working on that I've got, it's aimed at parents. Half of it's aimed for parents and half is for students. I do already have a general overview that gives them just a quick walkthrough, but I am working on some more detailed videos and things like that, but it probably will not be ready until closer to school actually starting just because of everything else. So, but yes, I am working on something. That'll show them how to, how to navigate their dashboard, how to use their calendar, how to um, submit assignments, and how to um, like email their teachers. That would be the main things. Yeah, because that clicking on the calendar, if it's on the calendar and they can't say they couldn't get to the thing with being able to click from the calendar. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways they can get to things. Um, Dawn, how many teachers at STEM and middle school used Canvas last year? All of eighth grade science used Canvas. So all of your eighth graders have at least been, ex all of your late eighth graders who were at Lakeside have at least been exposed to it. Um, at STEM, um, Mr. Castillo, Mr. Castagnon, Mr. Um, Wester, Ms. Phillips all used it. So basically the electives teachers, the CTE teachers there used it. So that's gonna be some very, won't hit all of them. Um, but again, at LMS, seventh grade math uses it, has used it for the last couple of years. And then this year, all of eighth grade science used it. So all of your kids have at least seen it, but um, well, and let, there was one teacher that did not let, I take that back, but the majority of eighth grade students will have at least seen it. They may not have used it in depth. Yes. Yate Corvath and Deb Kirby. Um, and then, like I said, there were a lot of other teachers that used it too. That was just a whole grade band that I know at least the kids had been exposed to it. So, um, it is going to take some, some getting to showing them these things at the beginning, you know, um, but like I said, I will make some things that hopefully will help with that. But it also, in, if, if it was me, this is how I would start the year, you know, would be spending some time getting to know Canvas with my kids as part of your classroom procedures. Fully functional on a Chromebook. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's why it's so important to not just link files, especially if they are Microsoft Word files because your kids on Chromebooks will not have Microsoft Word. So it's important to either convert those files to a PDF or make them embedded so that the students can see them, whether they're on their phone, on a Chromebook, and they don't have to have a Microsoft Office to download it and view it. That's the only caveat of having a Chromebook. But, it's, but yeah, fully Canvas itself actually works best in Chrome. So. These are good questions. Any other questions, guys, about anything? We've got some time now, so it can be about the calendar. It can be about announcements. It can just be uh, about anything. I can't guarantee I can answer it, but I can try. I have one, Misty. Yes. <laughs> uh, Misty, last week I was absent. And then when I opened your email to watch your video from last week, uh, I, I saw how to add the circle that you have on your home page to link things. Mm -hmm. I watched it the whole half an hour. And then I wanted to watch it again to make notes because I like it. And I have tried three times and I have the different video. You have an oh. explanation for that? I do not have an explanation for that. I have tried three times and the three times is your class about how to do the Google document cloud assignment, something like that. But I really want to watch again the one you showed last week um, about how to add the circles that you have in your home page. You know what I'm talking about? The buttons? Yes, yes. And you so also mentioned how to add a square, a table. 
I also like it, but uh, okay. I only watch it because I need to watch it two, three times to make notes. <laughs> I, I will. Watch, I watch it straight with non-stop, and then I want to watch it again to make notes. And ooh, ooh, you wrong one, you wrong one, you wrong one. Let me. I'll send you a a, a new email, Francisco. Okay. Um, with you. with the link to that video. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And also, if you have my playlist. Those videos are in my playlist too. And where is that? Because I tried to find also in Canvas and I didn't see, I went to my webinar to Edutoria. In Canvas, if you go to help. Okay. It says LEISD Canvas videos playlist. Okay. I tried to find it. But <laughs> and that'll take you to, hopefully I've got the link updated to the right one. If not, I'll fix that. My videos don't work for myself on here. Hopefully they'll work for you. Yeah, there it is, Canvas Video Library. So you can see over here, there's all of them. All of those videos. There at the bottom-ish are the ones about adding, adding banners and buttons. Yeah, that one, yeah. And then linking buttons to modules. There they are, right there. Okay. So here, I'll put I'll put this in chat too. There you go. All right, guys. It is one thirty one. Any other questions? Monica, the playlist is actually, um, it, it's very helpful. If you're enrolled in the basics course, it's the same videos. And I just basically, as soon as I finish adding them to the, the course, I added them to the playlist. But mm -hmm. it, it's nice to pull it back up when you're working. Um, and they are broken down. Some of them are a little bit longer, but most of them are about five to six minutes and they show one specific how to do this one thing. Okay, great. Thanks. I can just play them as I go along in the class. Yes. Okay. yes, that's that's the idea or that's how I like to do it because I know that it's hard to watch like an hour long video and figure out what you're supposed to be doing. So I try to keep it where it's like this will show you how to only make a page. Okay, a little morsel at a time. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dawn. Any guide for phone download of Canvas for who, John? Sorry, for the students, because I know a lot of my kids used it and I never really kind of walked them through it. But then I, I, I don't them. have much on the app for students. I do have some stuff on the app for parents. Okay. Because I mean, um, theoretically, if they log in through Rapid Identity, they should be able to download the Canvas app. The Canvas app will not be in Rapid Identity. They would have to do that on their own device. And then link it somehow. And, and then, so basically, the steps would be this, I say that, when you download the app, uh -huh. um, and maybe I do have something for it, but let me, so when they go to create a, a parent account, there, there is an, there's actually a parent app, and then there's a student app, and then there's a teacher app. So they need to make sure they get the student app, and then what they'll do is they'll search for Little Elm. Okay. So these steps are gonna be roughly the same. I can make something like this for the student versions as well, just to help you guys out there. Well, so you'll find your, you'll find your school and it'll say Little Elm ISD or Little Elm ISD parents. Obviously they click the one that doesn't say parents. They right. would click that one. And then um, because they already have an account, it should prompt them to log in at that point with their Google account. Cool. Yes. And so, like I said, guys, this is the course that I am working on for parents and students. Um, so there'll be a parent guide and then there will be a student guide. I am still, it is still under construction, but basically that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. But I will make sure to add something about the app. Thank you for asking about that. Cool. In fact, I'm gonna add a right now. So that I remember. <laughs> All right, any other questions? 
or thoughts or anything? All right, guys. Well, if not, then I will let you go. I, I truly appreciate your time and you guys being here today. Um, we will have one more of these next week. I think that's the last one because after that, um, we'll start um, admin launch and new teacher and then fall kickoff and kind of waiting to find out about how all that's going to look. So there is one more of these next week and it's going to talk a little bit about beyond basics. So we'll start looking at some, some deeper things, some things that are in the Canvas 102 course. Um, so again, feel free to join um, us as we look at that. And if you are not enrolled in any of these courses and you need them, please let me know. Uh, send me an email and I'll make sure to get you the links. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you. Thank you. You guys Thank have you. a great rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Thanks, bye. Bye, and I will send this recording out afterwards once I get attendance taken and everything.